So in this question, we're given an example of a measurement device that takes analog signals and samples them, digitizes them, and presents them as images. And the key word we should be looking for here is sampled and digitized. So these signals are sampled and digitized because they're then presented on a screen. And the question is asking us to characterize these signals. And the question helpfully gives us a few characteristics we can use to describe these signals. Is it random or is it deterministic? Is it continuous or discrete in time? Is it periodic or non-periodic? So first of all, because these signals are reflections from, from in this case, it looks like it's flaws within the surface of some material, then they are not deterministic. There is no mathematical formula that we can use to um, characterize this signal deterministically. So it's not deterministic. It's a random signal, right? So that's our first word, random. Now, is it continuous or is it discrete? Well, it looks continuous in time. It looks very continuous. But remember the question mentioned that it was sampled and digitized. So even though it's being presented on the screen as a continuous signal, it's not continuous. It's a discrete time signal because it's been sampled. So it's not continuous. It's a discrete time signal that's been plotted on the screen by simply connecting all the discrete samples. And the sample rate is high enough that it still looks smooth to the, to the person visualizing it, but it's a discrete time signal. Is it periodic? Does it look like it's repeating itself every so many seconds? No, so it's a non-periodic signal. Now, is it an energy signal or a power signal? Now, remember, an energy signal has finite energy and zero average power, whereas a power signal has uh, infinite energy but finite power. And here it looks like the signal starts from zero and eventually fades into zero and it's non-zero for a finite duration, so we call that an energy signal. Is it an analog or a digital signal? Well, we've said it's been sampled and we said it's been digitized, so it's a digital signal doesn't matter if it doesn't look digital to you. There, there could be so many levels that uh, it looks continuous to you, but it's a digital signal because the question says it's been digitized. Now, whether it's causal or non-causal depends on whether the starting point of the signal is after or before t equals zero. I think it's safe to assume that your signal always starts after t equals zero unless you have information otherwise, so it's a causal signal. So the way you would describe this signal is it's a random, discrete time, non-periodic, energy, digital, causal signal. That's what you would need for the five marks. Now, part B then speaks about a filter. It says these signals are passed through a filter to remove unwanted low-frequency components. So if it's blocking, because it's removing, if it's blocking low-frequency components, then it'll be allowing high-frequency components. So it's a high-pass filter that we want. We want to pass it through a filter that might look like this, that will allow high frequencies to pass, but block low frequencies. 
and they want a spectrum of the signal both before and after filtering. So before filtering, we don't know what the signal looks like in the frequency domain. It doesn't matter. You can sketch anything. It could look like that. It could look like that. It could look like that. It doesn't really matter. So I've sketched something that looks like that. So before filtering, it might look like that. Or anything similar. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be loosely band limited. Now, because it's a digital signal and it's been sampled, we expect it to be periodic in frequency. We ex expect this to repeat again at the sampling frequency and again at twice the sampling frequency, etc. So you need to have that to show that you understand that this is a sampled signal and it needs to be symmetric. So these need to be the right way around and that's your sampling frequency. Okay, so that's what you would need to get those five marks. Now, after filtering, what you want to do is make sure that some of the signal is removed. So after filtering, you want to remove part of the signal. And if you do that, you also need to do it to the part of the signal um, centered at the sampling frequency. So that happens again there, etc. So this is your sampling frequency. This is what the spectrum would look like if it hadn't been filtered. This is the bit taken away by the filter. So to get the full mark, to get the 10 marks, you would need to have axes with frequency clearly shown. It doesn't matter. You can have F and FS, and that's okay. But it's important that you have something here. It doesn't matter what the shape is, but you need to have that same shape centered at the sampling frequency because it's a sampled signal. And the same here. You need to be able to show that this part has been removed and therefore these low frequencies have been removed. So that's what you would need for the 10 marks for part B. Part C asks how autocorrelation can be used to find the energy. Now, the formula for autocorrelation for a discrete signal, remember, we're not talking about a continuous signal, so it's not a function of T or tau, it's a function of n. And n is your shift rather than uh, time. So this is the equation for autocorrelation. You can use minus infinity or you can use number of samples. You can use 0 to n or minus n to n. But basically you want an acceptable equation for autocorrelation. And then you need to show that to find the energy, this shift would need to be zero because you want the energy, you want this to look like that. And the only way to make these two look the same is for this to be zero. So the energy is the autocorrelation at zero shift. So you need this statement to get the full mark. Okay, so to get five marks, you need this statement and you need this justification. You need to show that for these two to be the same, the shift has to be zero. Okay, so that's, that's how you would answer this question here. And for this final part, it's asking whether the autocorrelation we just described, is it even or is it odd? Now remember, an even function is where f of minus x equals f of x. That's what an even function would look like. And an odd function would be f of minus x equals minus f of x. So if we look at the autocorrelation function, we have that. And 
you can um, show that this is equal to, so f of n is equal to f of minus n if you change your variable. So through a change of variable or something similar, you can show that these two are the same. So therefore, autocorrelation is even. So to get the full mark, you need to show this, you need to state this, and you need to say that it's even. So that's the end of that question. I hope um, you found that helpful. So each question, as you notice, you need a little bit of explanation, a little bit of working out, but not more than four or five lines, as you can see. So four or five lines. And here, all you needed to do was to sketch the graphs. So you need to read the question carefully and look out for these key words. So these key words, if you don't spot those, you'll probably miss out on things like the fact that it's discrete time, the fact that it's digital, and the fact that it's sampled.